Hallelujah. God, we ask for fresh butter, butter and honey, the honey of your presence and revelation, oh, enlightening our eyes. We thank you for the butter. Our steps are bathed in butter. <sighs> Walking in your gospel shoes of peace. As we stand in you and you stand in us, we rest in you. Hallelujah. And you rest in the temple of the Holy Ghost. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Shabbat, Shabbat, Shabbat. Thank you, Lord, for the mind of Christ, that we have the mind of Christ right now and we can experience Christ and know the deep things of God as you reveal it to us by the Holy Spirit. And I thank you and I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, the living God, so we can get to know you better today. <laughs> just a little bit closer, God, just a little bit, like about 10,000 years of growth. Just inject us, infuse us. Just take the nutrients from the fruit of the tree of life and just inject it right into our bloodstream inject it into our muscles and our tissues and fibers and molecules and atoms and hallelujah until we look like the second atom shaba shaba i just i've been remembering things <laughs> there's something about just remembering what god's done there's biblical principles god told uh, or was it joshua to meditate on these things day and night Meditate on the works of God, meditate on what God's done, and it gives you a little cloudy picture of what He's going to do, and then you'll be in awe and wonder when what He's doing shows up, because it's even greater than what He's done before, as we go from glory to glory. I want to share a scripture with you. This is from my NIV Bible. It's necessary in Vineyard. But I happened to, I just hung on to it anyway, as we went from glory to glory. Because I remember in somebody, I was reading this book, where Rick Joyner was climbing the mountain, and he didn't feel like he needed the sword. It wasn't really necessary at this level. But he strapped the sword and anchored himself into the mountain. <laughs> and so this is truly an anchor for our mind, so that we have the mind of Christ, and we can grasp the things that are freely open and for us by the scriptures. If you can see it in the spirit, you can manifest it in the natural. Hallelujah, because it's going to be on earth as it is in heaven. It's going to be in the natural realm as it is in the spirit realm. But this is Psalm 5. I want to read it to you. Holy Ghost, keep flooding the temple. Just, you know, just wash us in rivers of living water so that we look like we're alive like our maker. <laughs> from the inside out. Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my sighing. <laughs> Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God, for I, for to you I pray. Verse 3. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I lay my requests before you and wait in expectation. See, there's something about when you pray, you should actually expect the answer instead of just mumbling a bunch of words. It's called faith. <laughs> faith is the substance of things hoped for. Holy Spirit, Shaka. So in the morning, the first thing you should do is cry out to God. Call out to God. Like God called out to Adam. God was in the glory. Adam, where are you? Hallelujah. Oh, uh, it's like, Holy Spirit, what are you doing today? Jesus, where are you in the kingdom? Are you in the throne? Are you walking in Eden? Are we just going to walk in the cool of the day? Are we going into battle? Are we going to... What? Are we, uh, Jesus, <laughs> I know you're here in me and I know I'm there in you, but like, where are we together in perfect unity? Well, this says that in the morning I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. <sighs> I'm asking God for fresh vision. I'm asking God for fresh revelation. I'm asking God for open visions. 
dreams, revelations, the way God speaks, spirit. I'm asking God for increase of glory and I'm waiting in expectation. God, I'm, I'm thank you for that you're in me and I'm in you and we're together and we are one because I've been baptized into the spirit with you, Lord. But uh, I, I know there's more. I'm hungering and thirsting after righteousness and I will be filled because I am following the biblical principles of hungering and thirsting after you and your righteousness and all things are added unto me because I just followed a basic biblical principle of hungering and thirsting after you. Righteousness. Actually, the word after there, if you actually read it, blessed are those who hunger and thirst thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled it's like even after you've been made righteous you can still be filled be, the bible says be continually filled with the holy spirit and not drunk with wine or whatever that word be filled it's like a continual filling it's not like you just get filled one day it's like don't you leak <laughs> you know I don't wake up i'm not always 100 percent in the thick glory where i can't speak or i can't move it's like sometimes it feels dry, sometimes I go through warfare, sometimes I gotta break out, sometimes I have to put my set my affections and my mind, my heart, my spirit back on things above because I because I did the dishes in the flesh or something, you know? <laughs> uh, learning a language, playing a video game, going to work, just doing any daily things. You can get so distracted that you just have to place everything back there and get your perfect peace manifest again. I really like this sub. This kind of, this video is kind of about remembering. I when I remember the Lord on my bed, when I remember what he's done, like the the anointing comes, the peace comes. When I remember my past experiences, there's those experiences with God is a tree of life. It's the fruit of life. So that life never dies and that the anointing that's on those experiences is still active. That's why Elisha's bones, or Elijah, Elisha's bones raised that guy from the dead because the anointing was still there. The anointing never dies. <laughs> it's eternal. And you could just, that's why you, that's why God told, uh, was it Joshua, to meditate on these things day and night. What was he meditating on? What Moses wrote, the acts of God. Where, where the Spirit of God broke through and, and just it's just reminding yourself what God is like and it brings you into fresh encounters. The reason Joshua became the leader after Moses is because Joshua would stay outside the tent after Moses, like when he was in there, like he would be soaking up the manifest presence of God while everyone else is just going off and doing their daily life. Joshua was like a soaker. He would just sit there and soak in the presence of God and receive the presence of God outside his tent. And uh, that's what makes you a leader. It's like you, as I said in my last video, the greatest thing you could ever do is to receive what God has for you. And when you receive that presence of God, like you just continually absorb Him in, soak Him in, soak Him in. Those are nutrients for your spirit to grow your spirit, man. Then you grow big and strong and you're empowered with might in your inner man. And then it comes out through you. And it's like not you doing the stuff, it's, it's just Christ doing it through you as you yield to Him. And you just co-labor with Christ. Manifest the power of God, manifest the presence of God, manifest revelation, manifest prophetic. You're just Christ is manifesting through you because you're a yielded vessel, but first you receive. Because a man can give nothing unless he first receives. And so there's something about just waiting expectantly for what you ask and pray for. And uh sometimes I would just pray, like I was talking about how I'd pray for healing. And then, uh, like the healing wouldn't come. Like I would, I would expect to be healed. I'm not playing, praying by faith, you know. But it, then I would just kind of forget about it. And then, like you know, four or five hours later, I would just get hit. And wow, I don't know what was uh, why it wasn't instant all the time. But sometimes it's instant. Like I could feel. I'll just speak the word, and then, the thing would leave. The darkness. 
But that's what sickness is. It's darkness. There's no sickness in heaven because there's no darkness in heaven. Hallelujah. So there's biblical principles about remembering what God has done and what he's doing. It launches you into that. And when you're going through warfare, it's like you just remember the works of God. Remember the acts of God. Remember what God is like. And then when the enemy comes in to try to like trick you, it's like, well, that's not the image of God. That's not the word of the Lord. It doesn't have the peace of God on it. Hallelujah. Oh, here's another one I was going to read. Oh, shaka. This is the King James Bible for all of those who need to only hear that one translation. They can't hear any other translation. Oh, I got some nice scriptures for you here. It should bless your face off. <clears throat> Actually, I was just remembering how I was remembering how I was remembering. <laughs> this scripture, man, it just gets me every time. This is when Jesus was walking with the disciples after he raised from the dead. And they said this in Luke, 20, Luke 24, verse 32. And they said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? How do you know Jesus is talking to you? Because your heart will burn with the fire of God. His word is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. Holy Spirit, hold on. I'm gonna have some coffee. <laughs> oh. Father, I thank you for the ability to remember the glory encounters, <laughs> to launch us into fresh ones. Hallelujah. Actually, let's read that. There's so much in this chapter, chapter 24 of Luke. I'm going to read it. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they, they came to the sepulcher, bringing spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. This is when Jesus was like, they were looking for him in the tomb. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in. That's like the, the well of salvation. The stone's been rolled away. So that well of salvation's always open so you can draw from him. He's the cornerstone. He's the well of salvation. Just draw deep from him and pull out a drink. Anyone who's thirsty, come and drink. He would have just asked me, I would have given you living water. Where would it, it was going to come out of that stone, wasn't it? The stone is Christ. You just got to speak to the rock and he'll give forth his living waters. Speak heart to heart because that's where you drink from. They found, the uh, they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. They entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> they found not the body. Because his body is on the earth now in a bunch of living stones. He's resting his headship upon his body. And doing the exact same things that he did when he walked in his body. <laughs> All the earth 2,000 years ago. Anyways, let's, let's just read, it, read this. Hallelujah, Holy Spirit. And it came to pass as they were perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And they were afraid. <laughs> they bowed down their faces to the earth and said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you while he was yet in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered His words. They remembered His words. That's very important. It's one thing to hear something and then just kind of let it go in one ear and out the other or in your spirit and then it's like, where'd it go? But there's something about remembering. They had to be reminded by these men and white garments, or shining garments. Hallelujah. They remembered his words, and returned from the sepulcher, and told these things unto the eleven, and all the rest. Hallelujah. They were pretty excited. Are freaked out. This is amazing revelation. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, the other woman that 
were with them who told these things unto the apostles. Okay, this is this is amazing. This is amazing. A lot of people say you can't have woman preachers, <laughs> and they they try to say like uh, like my mom is the one who led me to Jesus. If there was no such thing as women preachers, I would not be saved today. The pastor who discipled me was a woman. She was the most prophetic person I've ever seen in my life. I'd never seen so much glory come out of one person before. We would just, I'd be playing a song and then I would feel the spirit. I would kind of pull it back and just point at people and just start prophesying over all these people, like almost every service. And it would be bang on. Like she would, one time I was frustrated. I was I'm like, I hate women. Like this, this thing came unto me like, because I got wounded and then I was like, I hated all women because of that. And then, and I, I, I didn't even like take a bus. I walked all the way to this church building. Well, she, and then, because I, I was the worship leader, I was mad. I didn't want to get on a bus. I didn't want to look at any women. And then, my, and then I show up and like, uh, I said, uh, can you pray for me? I'm not feeling very good. And then uh, she just, she said, oh, like she started praying for me and just prophesied the exact, like exactly whatever thing, everything that was going on in my heart. It, everything was exposed and made bare before her because she was in the Lord and the Lord was coming through here. And, pro and, it, and then she sang one of my own songs over me and just tears like, oh man. I never seen someone so full of the Holy Ghost in my entire life, except for this other guy, Bob Edwards. But, but, and this person is like, I can look at them, I can hear them, and that's person. This person discipled me in the Word of the Lord. Um, so uh, look at what happened here. And Mary, uh, it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna. Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them which told these things to the apostles. What are they saying? They're talking about the resurrection of Jesus. How angels spoke to them, speaking spirit words. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Look what happened. And their words seemed to them as idle tales and they believed them not. If you have your Bible, I would underline that. The disciples, the men, they did not believe the women's report. Who knows why? But it's going to come back on them. The disciples did not believe them. It says they believed them not. Verse 12. Uh, then Peter arose and ran into the sepulcher, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at which was come to pass. <laughs> And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. I don't even know what a furlong is. <laughs> and they walked, talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass, while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. I'm going to share with you an amazing key. How you could always grow in the glory. It says, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. Why? Why, why could they not recognize Jesus? Because they had unbelief in their heart. Go back to verse 11. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Unbelief will always distort the real Jesus. Unbelief will keep you from entering the promises. That's why you're to meditate day and night on the things that he's done, that he's doing, that he's going to do because it imparts faith to you. And you have faith to receive the things that God is doing and will do just by meditating on what he has done. <laughs> They believe them not. And if you go down to verse 16, but their eyes were holden that they should not know him. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. You know that the descendants of Abraham came through laughter, which is Isaac. Isaac's name means laughter. Abraham was the father of faith. That's why he had laughter. That's why he had joy. So Abraham's descendants would come through laughter because he was the father of faith. 
it takes unbelief and religion to, to be sad all the time. Because <laughs> religion teaches unbelief because its religion is from Satan. He's the religious spirit. Look at the Pharisees, how they put Jesus, murder Jesus. They wouldn't receive his words. They wouldn't receive, like they, met it, they, they memorized the Bible. But when the word of God in spirit and life is manifest right before their eyes, they want to murder him. That's what religion does. That's what Satan does. Jesus said, he called the Pharisees, he said, you're sons of the devil. Because they served religion and they did not, they did not serve Jesus' father. They did not serve Christ. They did not serve God. They served a religion and wanted to establish themselves and not the kingdom of God. Anyways, it was because of unbelief. So let's enter into faith. That's what I'm saying. Let's meditate on things above. And meditate on what God has done and it shows us what he's doing and what he will do in part but it's always going to be even more glorious what he's going to do because it, we always go from glory to glory let's keep reading and he said unto them what manner of communication are these that you have to one another as you walk and are sad <laughs> see unbelief would always will always bring depression unbelief will always bring sadness confusion that's why Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith he has the oil of joy upon him faith will always lead us into joy he's like what did Jesus say with when the disciples were with him something about uh, I told you these things that your joy may be full in John anyways let's just get back to this and the one of, and one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known these things which are to come to pass in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trust that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Remember, everything that Jesus did in his body, he's going to do through his collective body, living stones. He's the cornerstone where the living stones attached to the cornerstone. So he manifests revelation through us. <clears throat> if you cannot say he who has seen me had seen Jesus, you're looking at yourself. You're going to be so consumed with Him that you don't even see yourself anymore. All you see is Him. All you see is Him and people. All you see is the hope of the nations. All you see is the rock. All you see is life. You look through His eyes and you see His love for the world. And you just want to share Him everywhere you go. To every single person. that Everything that has breath. It's created to praise. Even the animals. Everything that has breath praises the Lord. Okay, let's, uh, oh yeah, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Well, it's been 2,000 years. We've stepped into the third day. He's raising up the entire body of Christ to be well aware that we are seated with Him in heavenly places. It's not something you get when you die. You've already died and risen in Him. Just the revelation knowledge hasn't hit you yet. That's why you think from an earthly perspective. You haven't set your affections on things above. You haven't set your mind on things above. It's still on the earth below. And that's why all the troubles are there. Because you're focused from a lower perspective. <laughs> I was learning Chinese the other day. And the word master is shu. And it's a high level tone. You want to hear the tones of the Lord. The high frequencies of God. If you want to walk with God in the highway of holiness. Just come up. In Revelation chapter 4, he says, Come up here, and I will show you things. Come up here. There's an invitation for us to come through the door. The door is Jesus Christ himself. No one else comes to the Father. There's an invitation for us to come to the Father through him, through the Son, in the Holy Ghost. If you're struggling with that, just worship God. Put on a CD. I'll put, the, put one song on repeat. Preferably something without words to distract you and just go. Just go be with the Father. Just go be with Holy Spirit and manifest presence. 
Today I want your best, God. I want your manifest. Hallelujah. <laughs> I just want to rest. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I just put on Christ right now from all the distractions, distractions, <laughs> destructions of the world, <laughs> distractions of the world. Anyways, so he's raising us up. We're already up there. If you'll just only believe and you will receive. What's up there in heavenly places? Have you not seen heaven? Have you not seen the king of glory? Have you not seen what's available for every believer who's been translated there? Freely have received, freely give. Whatever you revelation you receive, you can freely give it and sow those seeds into others. It may not always like come as a vision and it might be just a dream. Maybe God will show you something. You just need to learn his language. It may just come as like a scripture just explodes and the tears roll down your face and it's so full of life. It's available for everyone. Anything that anyone else is walking in, if you just like hunger and thirst after righteousness and ask God for it and it'll be imparted in part to your life. Years ago I asked God, I, I going through this entire Bible weeping. Just, God, you took all these, all these people have encounters with you. I got hungry. I was like, look at you walk with Moses. Like, you know, mo face to face. You walk with Adam in the cool of the day. You caught up Elijah or, or Ezekiel into the heavens. You translated Enoch. When Jesus talked, the hearts burned. What about me? What about me, God? You, you, you take John, you show him all these glories in heaven. Paul gets caught up to the third heaven, utters words. Like, he can't even utter these words. It's unimaginable. All these disciples had encounters with you. What about me, God? What about me? I need to experience you, the living God. And I've had people try to talk me out of it. It's not about experience, it's just about faith. Well, yeah, your faith should lead you to something. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Are you in the substance of God or are you just hoping for it? No one can talk me out of a relationship with God. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's too precious, too valuable. I don't like unbelief and I don't like religion. Because I've experienced both and I don't like them. Anyways, uh, let's go here. Shaka. So yeah, we're raised up. Just look at him. Look at the king of glory. Let that glory flood you. Because what you meditate on grows in your focus. But we trusted that it had been he which had redeemed Israel. Beside all this, the day is the third day. Today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished by what <laughs> which were early at the sepulchre. And they found not his body, and they came, saying, They had also seen a vision, of, a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre, found it even so as the woman had said. But, they, but him they saw not. <laughs> In English that means they didn't see him. <laughs> then he said unto them, O fools! And slow of heart to believe. Slow of heart to believe. Notice how he didn't say slow of mind to believe. Because a man believes in his heart. Slow of heart to believe. All that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded, ooh, Shabba, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village whither he went, and he made though as though he would have gone further, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us. They constrained him. That's like you're grabbing pant, the pant leg of Jesus and you're not letting go, saying, you're taking me with you. You're taking me with you. I'm not letting you go unless you have enough strength to throw my arms off of you. <laughs> the creator, you know? 
<laughs> That's like taking your heart, just wrapping it around Jesus and hanging on with everything inside you. It's like taking all the focus off of the world, all the focus off the problems, all the focus off of the things that drag you away from Him and saying, I'm constraining you. You have to abide with me. Abide with me, Jesus. I want to abide with you and you and me. I want to be with you. You're worth more to me than all the distractions. You're worth more to me than all, any, anything of value. Nothing of value comes close to even just being with you, even just staring at you. I just want to sit at your feet like Mary and just let your words wash over me because I know that life comes within your words. You're everything to me, Jesus. He made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening the day is far spent. And he went to tarry with them. He saw the hunger in their hearts. You know, the presence of God will always flood a hungry heart. Because that's hungering and thirsting after righteousness. And he is our righteousness, not our own filthy rags. You're hungering and thirsting after him. Say, well, I already have them. Well, I want more. Wait, wait till my heart is burning, then I'll know how much I have of Him. And if my heart is still human, if it's still, it's still beating flesh, then I still need more. I want, I want Him so much that it's just nothing of me. It's just me consumed in this river of living water. It's me consumed by the life spirit of God. Nothing of me, just all of you, Holy Ghost. <sighs> Day is far spent, and he went to tarry with them. He went to chill out with them, because he saw their hunger. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. As they have done many times before, he broke the bread and fed the multitudes, said gather up the baskets so nothing will be lost he broke the bread many times at the last supper they had communion together and he broke the bread and then he did it again he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and their eyes were opened he is the spirit of wisdom and revelation <laughs> Jesus revealed the scriptures Jesus revealed the scriptures to the disciples. He opened their understanding. And then he opened their eyes by the breaking of the bread. That brokenness. Fall on the rock and be broken. Why? So that the fragrance of Christ can be released into the atmosphere. He opened their eyes and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. What happened there? Through the brokenness of the bread, they knew Him. They recognized Him. They seen Him. And then He vanished out of their sight. He vanished out of their, their natural sight. Because he wants, them to, he wants them to follow Him where He is. That where He is, they may be also. Where is He? Heavenly places. He disappeared from the natural realm so that they would chase Him in the spirit. They'll chase Him in the heart. Do not our hearts burn when He went over the scriptures with us. When He remembered the things that have passed, our hearts were ignited. And as we walk with Him now in the, presence, our, in the present, our hearts were burning. As He broke the bread, our vision opened wider. And into the future, he's leading. He left a trail of his presence for us to follow. Because when you remember the past, it activates a burning and an anointing. It's there that you, and then you start. Your eyes start opening up to things around you, and there's a there's a pathway to go deeper into the future with him. You follow him. That where he is, you may be also. That when you you can sit with him on his throne even as he also has sat down with his father in his throne. And you can see from the kingdom, you can see from God's perspective, you can see and experience the way life is. I say this through experience. You can experience 
the Father, because that's where Christ has sat down. You can experience heaven. You can experience the unconditional love. And then when you come back to this realm, you can release the kingdom. You can release unconditional love. You can release the anointing that breaks the yoke because you've been with the anointing. You've been with the Father. You have His perspective. You have His heart. And His heart is burning for the whole world. For God so loved the world that He gave Jesus to suffer tremendously naturally and spiritually so that we could be healed saved and delivered sozo in our bodies and our soul and our spirit with God true story and their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight search your heart like test yourselves whether you are in the faith. Do you not know that Christ is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. Everything that Christ was, when you read about him in the Bible, that stuff should be happening around you. That stuff should be happening through you. Does your heart burn when you read the scriptures or do you get angry? <laughs> Let's keep reading. And they said, what to another? Do not our hearts burn within us? Well, he talked with us, by the way. Well, he opened to us the scriptures. See, now they're remembering just like a few minutes ago. It was like, wasn't it glorious? Did not our hearts burn? Jeremiah said, the word of God is like, the, it's like fire in my bones. First time I ever experienced prophecy come through one of my friends. who was like, he was like a total Pharisee. <laughs> Not totally, like he was, he would, he grew up in church, so he'd be like a Pharisee one day, and then fire of God, and Pharisee, fire. He just had to get all that stuff washed out of him. I don't know how he's doing now, but I haven't seen him in years. But I remember he was just like, he was crying out to God. He was hungering and thirsting for righteousness. And God did fill him, and we were up in his pastor's home, and all of a sudden, like we were just in prayer, and I could feel this just came in the room it felt like peace but the peace was heat it felt like you were able to walk through the sun you know the one that big ball of fire in the sky and not get burned <laughs> absolute <laughs> fire I'm like what is this i didn't say anything i was like and then and then like about maybe three or five seconds later I feel like God is saying this. I feel like I'm supposed to prophesy. And he starts prophesying. I'm like, oh, that's what that was. It was the spirit of prophecy. And it was like fire. And he, I don't even know what he prophesied. He just prophesied something. And, uh, and then you could feel it lift off. And he was still prophesying. I'm like, oh, man. Later on, I understood that. Like, you should only say what God is saying. And then uh, just kind of like, you don't have to add to it. Like, just saying what he's saying is enough. <laughs> But it's human nature. We need to put that thing to death, you know? So it's just Christ's nature coming through us. We're all learning. We're all going from glory to glory. Hallelujah. So there's grace. Grace is the power of God to kill that thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shama. Holy Spirit. Okay. And they said to one another, Did not our hearts burn within us? Well, he talked with us, by the way. And while he opened to us the scriptures, how do you know that Jesus is talking to you? Because you'll feel a consuming fire of unconditional love purging you. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem. <laughs> how do you know a religious spirit's talking to you? Because you'll be so bored, you'll be so lame, you'd rather be playing video games or watching football. I don't even like football. I'd rather be watching football right now. I don't even like football. But uh, yeah, it's a religious spirit, they're boring. Religion is really boring. It's like double death. They teach you to die to yourself, but they never give you any resurrection life. It's double death. You're dead on the earth while you walk, and then you're dead in your spirit, doing religious things. It's double death. And then you die, and you don't have eternal life. You've never received him. You've re Jesus called them sons of the devil, Pharisees, religious people. 
You need to receive the Spirit. It's with the heart you believe. And there's evidence in your life because you have a changed heart. You have a changed lifestyle. You live for Him. I mean, a lot of people say they're, you know, Paul, Saul was absolutely religious. He was, he was zealous. He would kill, murder Christians. But he didn't have a changed life because he didn't have a changed heart. And out of the heart flows the issues of life. There'll be evidence in your life. Someone prophesied over me years ago when I brand new believer. It's like your family members won't even recognize you. I'm going to do such a work in you. And it was true. Because I invited my nephew over and uh, he literally did not recognize me. Because I looked so, I looked so different. I spoke different. I believed different. I experienced different. I'd be like, I, I brought him to church. And we'd be like, we'd just be, he doesn't even believe in God. And uh, like, feel the glory, man. We, we, we have our hands up, just rocking to, uh, swaying to the, mu the worship music, whatever. And uh, I was, he said a sinner's prayer. I don't know if he, uh, if he meant it from the heart or not. But uh, who knows? Flood him with grace, God, in Jesus' name and truth. But uh, a lot of people didn't recognize it. And I went to talk to some old friends from years ago. It's like, who are you? Where did you get all this wisdom? It's like, that Chris is dead. If there's any wisdom, it's not mine because I'm an idiot. <laughs> if there's any wisdom whatsoever coming through me, it is not me at all. It's just because God loves you and he wants you to know he's real. I'm dead. Let's read this. <clears throat> and they said one to another, do not hearts burn with okay. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together, and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and hath appeared to Simon. And they told these things which were done in the way, and how it was known of them break uh, of them in breaking of bread. And as they thus spake, Joseph Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. And saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Listen, when Jesus said something like that, when he says, Peace be unto you, it's not just in word only. His words were spirit and life. There was a principality of peace, a wave, a tidal wave of peace that goes right through them. How do you know that, Chris? Because I know it through experience. Every time Jesus has ever spoken to me, there's always been tidal waves of peace. It's always the Spirit speaking and bringing life to me, energizing me, equipping me, just my inner heart just burning, the life of God just consuming me. It feels good. You know, John like turns around to see Jesus like a dead man at his feet in the first book of Revelation. You think you know him, you have no idea. I, bet, I remember standing before just an angel. My flesh, my whole body was just shaking. And I could see that God's face is turned towards us. So what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do when God's face is facing towards you? You fall on the ground. And you just, you worship. You worship the king. You just, there's nothing, and it's just an angel. Like, just the purity that comes into the atmosphere. It's like, I just, I just like one wrong thought and I could be destroyed. Don't think about anything lustful. Don't think about anything prideful. Don't think, don't think about anything. Just, God, please don't kill me. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Because there's so much power and it's beyond you. It's beyond you. Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. It's because of the presence of God in the mountain. You think you know God. When you know God, He will leave a mark on you. When Jacob wrestled the angel of the Lord, he was limping. He had a limp. When you have an encounter with God, you'll, your life will be changed. You will not be the same. You cannot be. When you have an encounter with religion, you can remain the same. Your, your vocabulary will change, but it will have no substance in it. 
the only substance we'll probably have is debates and arguments and darkness. But when Christ comes, He changes your heart. It is with the heart that men believe unto salvation and proclaim with their mouth. That's what happened to the disciples. They needed that encounter with Jesus. Because He's the tree of life. They need that spirit of the fear of the Lord. They need that fire of God in their bones. He is the Word of God. They experienced what Jeremiah experienced, but they experienced it face to face. Not, 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 not very, it was like less of a veil. Because the more we go from glory to glory, the thinner that veil becomes. Let's keep reading this. And thus they spake Jesus himself and stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. <laughs> and, they said, and he said unto them, Why are you troubled? And why do your thoughts arise in your hearts? Thoughts in your hearts? I thought we think with our mind. Behold my hands and my feet, it is, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. I think the Bible says flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. He had flesh and bones. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when he had uh, thus spoken, he showed it unto them his hands and his feet. And while they were... Well, they yet believe not for joy. See, they believe not for joy. Faith will always bring you into joy. <laughs> Unbelief will always manifest sadness. You can tell the face is the one. You need to be like me. You need to repent and be sad. You need to read the Bible 55 hours a day. But don't pray in the Spirit. <laughs> Whatever. I'm just kidding, man. I'll stop tormenting the religious demons. <laughs> I'll let Jesus do it through me. Hallelujah. Anyways, there's there's a whole lot more. We could. This is an eternal gospel. It goes on forever. But my camera ran out of time. Oh man. The only reason I make these videos is to make you hungry for Him. He's broken the bread. Now follow, follow the bread of His presence. Follow Him and. Be where he is and open your eyes, which is right here. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see him. Glory. Enjoy your walk with God. Believe, and you will have great joy. Mm -hmm.